I'm on a filter that AFC out of my shows. Oh, man. Uh, the, the tip of the hat to Peter Bernard, because he recommended this Adobe... What What is this called here? Adobe Podcast Beta Noise Remover. Removes noise from voice recordings with speech enhancement. And this is... I got the air conditioner going, and... Uh, Yes, if I just hit stop and use or try to remove it with the noise reduction here on Audacity, it's going to sound pretty funky, but it, it sounds good. I did some tests, and that means more appreciation for more people. And I never thought I would be appreciating Adobe for providing a free service, but at least until they start charging for it, you betcha. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff going on, as mentioned in our last Appreciator program, which uh, we'll get into as we go. But uh, I'm just glad I'm here. And uh, to more appreciation to Mark Rose and, of course, all the Fusebox people. But um, I just tossed it out there uh, to do a Zappa discussion with him because he's another fellow Zappaite. And this is going to probably expand it to something rather big, but uh, forthcoming. Very soon, within the next couple of days, there'll be another, uh, well, another special appreciator program. Mark Rose and I talking Frank Zappa and other digressions. Um, and you will not want to miss this one, even if you missed this show, which I know is physically impossible Nonetheless, even if you miss this show, you should check out this Frank Zappa show that is forthcoming. Um, the big appreciation showcase is just becoming too big, and I'm having way too much fun doing it, bringing things that I like out of the onsug, which is good, and it's, it, it, it is so good. There is, at the Frank said, I think recently, 14,000 hours of audio in there. And it's hard to even know where to start. So at the very least, I am hoping to bring shows and hosts from the long history. I think it's 15 years or close to it of the Overnight Scape and the Overnight Scape Underground to your ears through this conveyance and um, have my little say about it, which is always a lot of fun. And we're going to keep hammering away uh, on this show. I'm going to continue to do short old time radio stuff because this is an important part of our audio heritage. And there's a lot of stuff out there that uh, on this short form even can be shared, especially Vic and Sade, which I cannot stress how much joy I get from bringing you Vic and Sade and uh, how much joy I get from having the excuse to listen to it again myself. The Bob and Ray stuff fits this format so perfectly. In fact, uh, it, I, we're probably going to have a Vic and Sade too, but uh, let's have a tasty morsel of the amazing Bob and Ray, right now, right here. Time again for Matt Neffer, boy spot welding king of the world. Today, Matt and his friend Todd are sitting quietly in Todd's library as Matt puts down volume 18 of his encyclopedia and turns to Todd, he says, well, it's nice being here in your library, Todd. I thought this was your library, Matt. Oh? I mean, it doesn't look like my library, all these books and things. I, My library is rather sparsely furnished with books. I... Out here in the foyer. Oh, yes. Oh, now I know it's your house, Matt. I don't have a foyer in mine. That's right, you don't. That encyclopedia you were reading, Todd, you had... Uh... What volume was it? It was volume 18, 18, Matt, but you were reading it. I was sitting here watching you read it. 
Out here in the front porch, Todd. Sure, sure thing, Matt. I didn't hear what you were saying about the encyclopedia. I was saying that you were reading there from volume 18. I was reading from volume 18 of yes. the encyclopedia. Re to st. Matt. Yes, Tom. I'm out on the porch. Would you let me in, please? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm awfully yes. sorry about that, Todd. Certainly a beautiful day outside. Oh, open it. I'm out here now, Todd. Oh, of course, Matt. Matt, this isn't getting us anywhere. Let's leave the door anywhere. open, shall we? Yes. I said let's leave the door open. Oh, all right. That's better. Matt, this isn't... This isn't solving any of your problems. I had a letter this morning from Inspector Hartstone. Inspector Hartstone? Yes, of the death squad. But... He's been off for some time. Up here! Upstairs, Todd. I'll take the elevator, Matt. It'll be quicker. No, you're taking the stairs. I can hear you. No, it's me going down. I'm already up here in the elevator, Matt. Well, I'm downstairs now, Todd. Well, which would be quicker for me to get down, by elevator or on the stairs? I think probably if you took the stairs, two at a time. Right. There we are. Yes, that was quicker, Matt. But I won't say it was more comfortable. Out here in the kitchen, Todd, making up a little blast. And so Matt and Todd ponder the problems which face Matt as boy spot welding king of the world. Next time, a strange request is made on the telephone. We'll hear Matt say, No, I will not. In the next episode of Matt Neffer, written for radio by O. Leo Leahy. And, yeah, that there is just... Uh, I love these Matt Neffer, boy spot welding king of the world episodes. Nothing, yeah, nothing ever really happens. What you wind up with is Matt walking up and down steps, going from room to room, and his beloved friend Todd following him around, trying to ascertain what is going on with poor Matt and his adventures. But that in and of itself, the comedic genius of Bob and Ray is in this commonplace sort of uh, stuff. And I am enamored of it. And I hope you are too, because um, if you're going to continue following this, it's for sure going to be an integral part uh, until I run out of episodes. I mean, that's the interesting thing. I've always worried about running out of episodes and segments, and right now I worry if I will ever run out of Vic and Sades, but the bottom line is I haven't up to now, and there's so much of it, and it bears repeating. I don't I haven't heard these episodes, I, and I think to myself, oh, I've heard all these, but it's been years since I've really listened to a lot of this, and it, it's so refreshing. And maybe I'm getting old and senile. That, that's the nice thing about sick being senile. You can listen to your favorite music for the first time again, over and over again, over a short period of time, and... What would be weird is if you listen to a piece of music that, or a show that you've loved for years and suddenly you don't anymore, even though you don't remember ever hearing it before. That could get a little strange. Um, we have a new show on the Overnightscape Underground site at onsug.com. James's Coffee Blog Show of which his very first introductory episode just posted, and it's, uh, at least as of now, what I'd call a short cast. The first episode is t under 22 minutes, and um, let's see, uh, join me for a monologue wherein I share what I am thinking. He expects to cover topics like personal websites, the indie web moments of joy, writing, and more. And uh, 
just listen to the first episode. And yes, some of his stuff about having personal servers and a personal website, I really should pay better attention because I fell way behind in that. And yeah, it's over my head completely. Uh, the idea of having my own server, which isn't the worst idea in the world. Um, I just... The technicalities, uh, I run a live 365 station at this point in time for, uh, the, it's attached to Ingo's Art Cafe and trying to figure out how to do certain things. I used to be really good at picking up how to you know, do stuff online with these widgets and interfaces. And I don't know whether it's me or time has got, I am hopelessly lost in trying to do what I would think is a rather simple thing in, in an internet automated radio station. But what I, what I want to do is right now I just have a bunch, a huge bunch of songs on Hot Springs Radio that just go round and round, and there's so many of them that I mean, you don't get repeats very often, and it randomizes them, and in between, it plays the announcements for Ingo's Art Cafe, which is basically the function that I needed to do. But now I am asked to create a specific genre of music to air during a specific time of day, and there are all these clocks and playlists. And the most important thing to them is everything is tagged so they pay the proper royalties. And I'm just not getting it. I'm not getting it at all. And I'll keep plugging away at it because, because I'm that stubborn. I just... Am I really getting this knuckleheaded? It becomes the question at hand with this. Um, I, like I said, we're going to, uh, before I get into too much of anything, let's, uh, listen to some delicious, nutritious Vic and Sade. And now get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, Chris Coe's Vic and Sade. You know, one way to get more pleasure from your daily tasks is to do them so well that you're extra pleased with the results. Now, take the matter of baking cakes for your family. It isn't much fun turning out a cake that's, oh, you know, just all right, but nothing extra. But just wait till you make your first sure mix Crisco cake. Mmm, what a thrill you'll get. Because that new Crisco can give you lighter, smoother textured, better tasting cakes than you ever made before. Yes, ma'am, cakes so plump and tempting, you'll tingle with pride even while they're on the cooling rack. You see, Sure, sure Mix Crisco gives you three exclusive new cake-making advantages you don't get in any other home shortening we know of, not even the most expensive shortening. With Crisco, you can make cakes that are lighter, cakes that are smoother textured, and cakes that taste better than you ever made them before. And it's all due to a revolutionary shortening discovery, a patented discovery you get only in the new Crisco. Sure Mix Crisco is different from other shortenings. Why, you can even see the difference Crisco makes in your cake batter. Crisco batter is smooth and satiny, and you know what a batter like that means to really delicious cakes. Why, recently, an independent shortening test was made in hundreds of homes just like yours. Women from coast to coast baked cakes with the new Sure Mix Crisco. And those Crisco cakes were compared to cakes made with every other type of shortening. And say, when the families of those women chose the cakes they liked best... Their vote was four to one for cakes made with Crisco over all the other shortenings combined. So why not treat your family to those better-tasting Crisco cakes? And remember, it wasn't only four to one for lighter cakes, but four to one for flakier pastry, four to one for better-tasting fried foods. That was the family vote, four to one for new Sure Mix Crisco. Well, sir, our friends who live in the small house halfway up in the next block 
have only just finished their noonday meal as we join them now. They're assembled in the living room, and Sade and young Rush are enjoying a brief recess between eating and dishwashing. The master of the menage is speaking at the moment, and we hear him say, If I was half a man, I'd follow my inclinations and stretch out on the Davenport. I'd call up the office and tell him not to expect me this afternoon. Sleepy? Overwhelmingly so. You ate too much, girl. True. Also, I slept an unconscionable number of hours last night. I further stay in bed longer than his regular schedule calls for. He finds himself drowsy and languid the next day. Watch out or you'll get to be like Gully Hooker there in Dixon. The name Gully Hooker eludes me. Father was straw boss on the railroad section gang. Uh-uh. You remember Gully? Wore one necktie down his back and one necktie down his chest. Uh-uh. Had two parts in his hair. Uh-uh. Oh, you must have known Gully. What are you going to say about him? Great fella for sleep. Fell asleep while he was proposing marriage to Gertrude Skeetle. Mm. Dixon people joked about it for years. Gully and Gertrude were sitting on the sofa, and Gully started his little speech about his great love, and would Gertrude consider him as a husband, and so on and so forth, and finally quit talking in order to wait for his answer, and Gertrude said she'd have to have a minute to think it over, and... Pretty soon she murmured yes and looked at Gully, and there he was sound asleep with his mouth open. That's very romantic. No. <laughs> yeah. Nixon people joked about it for years. Who was witness to this tender tableau? Vernon Skeetle, Gertrude's little brother. He was hiding behind the bookcase. Could you accept Gully? Oh, sure. Uncle Fletcher tells me they live in Belvedere now. Got five children, all girls. Gosh, but I wish I didn't have to go to work this afternoon. Well, Willie, shall we jump? We just now come in here, Ma. Got a terrible big stack of dishes today. We might just as well have stayed in the kitchen. Every noon it's the same thing. We get up from the table and come in here and sit down, and about four seconds you say, Well, Willie, shall we jump? <laughs> yes, I guess I do. But it bothers me to have dirty dishes waiting in the sink. Let's give our dinner a chance to settle. You know the stunt you pull? What's that? You try to distract my attention by bringing me in here and talking a blue streak till pretty soon it's time for you to beat it off to school and I have to do the dishes by myself. Ah, oh, go on. Look at yesterday. Yesterday you done all the talking. You were telling Gov about Mr. Erickson coming whining around about wallpaper and upstairs. He was here again this morning, Vic. Erickson? Yes, wringing his hands and dabbing at his eyes. Seeking to escape from his pledge? Uh-huh. He promised us wall upstairs wallpaper, but he can't get himself to actually give us upstairs wallpaper. Haven't you got him caught like a rat in a trap? I'm scared he'll get loose. Slippery as an owl anyway, you know. Eel. Hmm? Eel. Eel? Slippery as an eel, not slippery as an owl. Miss Donahue says owl. I'm pretty sure it's eel. I wonder who's the smartest, little 14-year-old boys or grown-up ladies. Hmm. Huh. The lame, silly alibi he had this morning, Vic. Erickson. Tried to tell me it was hard to get wallpaper these days. Said the wallpaper manufacturers in South America were hanging on to it. South America? South America. United States don't get their wallpaper from South America, do they? It's news to me. I'll say. And just more and dabbing away at his eyes. Erickson is a pirate. Aggravates me sometimes to where I could scream. Hmm. By golly, if I was to lean back on this Davenport, I'd go to sleep in four seconds. Well, Willie, shall we jump? Oh, ma'am, we only just got sat down. All right, go ahead. Trick your poor old mother into doing all them dishes by herself. I'm going down on West Monroe Street this afternoon. Mrs. Harris? Well, if I have time. It's Miss Trogel I'll go see first. She's got a new batch of pictures of Margaret's baby and has been dying to show them to me. Anything special you fellas want for supper? I'll be going past that fancy grocery place on Market Street on my way home. How about some of them great big black olives? We already got great big black olives. Where? Tucked away in a little hiding place I know about. Pantry? <laughs> Don't you wish you knew. Uh. <laughs> oh, say, Uncle Fletcher might come for supper tonight. Uh. He might and he might not. He won't ever let a person pin him down. Afraid I'll go to extra trouble, see. Mm. And I don't care much for that way of doing business. 
I'm going to have company. I want to know in advance I'm going to have company. But Uncle Fletcher can be obstinate as a mule. I don't want to put you to extra trouble, Sadie. If I stop by this evening, all you'll have to do is slap on an extra plate. If I don't stop by, you won't have to slap on an extra plate. No good trying to reason with them. But I want to know whether I'm cooking for three people or four people, Uncle Fletcher, I tell him. But he only shakes his head. <laughs> Uncle Fletcher is a cat bird. Yeah. <laughs> well, Willie? Shall we jump? <laughs> clock's ticking away like a cyclone. Pretty soon you'll hop up and dash off to school and your poor mother's left in the lurch with 9,000 dirty dishes. Hey, talking about dirty dishes, I'd hate to have to wash and wipe dishes for the Hendersons. Why? Frederick and his wife and two children have moved in with him. Which one's Frederick? He's the boy between Alvin and George. You know Frederick Henderson, Gov. Always wears bicycle pants clips, but don't own any bicycle. Oh, the guy we saw yesterday puffing away on a pipe without any tobacco in it? Yeah. He's funny about stuff. Wears garters, but no socks. Wears a necktie, but no collar. Wears cuffs, but no sleeves. Wears bicycle pants clips and don't own a bicycle. Smokes away on a pipe that's got no tobacco inside. Is he a half-wit? Yeah. He is not. He's smart as a whip. Took all the honors when he graduated from high school. What do they call the fellow that does that? Valedictorian. Sure. No, when it comes to brains, there's no flies on Frederick Henderson. You say he's back with his parents now? Uh-huh. Had this wonderful position in Detroit, Michigan, but something happened. I don't know what. He'll find something else, though. I mean, is that make living at the Hendersons? Well, let's see. Alvin George, Cor and her man, Henry and his college chum and the college chum's cousin, Edna and her man and baby, Charlie and his wife, the old folks, now Frederick and his family. Eighteen. Imagine. Boy, you must have a stack of dishes to wash and wipe to choke a horse. Let's go investigate how big a stack of dishes we got. Oh, I take it easy, Mom. Uh-huh. Noon hour's a very pleasant time, ain't it? Grand. No, I mean that. Fella sits around with his family and chats about this and that and feels easy and comfortable. I believe the noon hour's my favorite part of the day. Mm -hmm. Think of all other houses up and down the street where people are enjoying their noon hour. As far as that goes, think of all the people all over town, all over the county, all over the state. Mm -hmm. Why, right this minute, millions of different families are... Sitting in their living room, digesting their dinner. Mm-hmm. more I think of it, the more I'm convinced the noon hour is my favorite part of the day. If you fetch me volume seven out of my large library, I'll read you what R.J. Kunk has to say about the noon hour. <laughs> oh, heck, some other time. Maybe I can remember a few of his jewel thoughts. In hock ad liberatis spinach hunk. Sim spittle ad cornucopia dumb clock weep. Nomenclature, easy money, vap. Tipple, stupo, crash. Greek junk, huh? Latin junk. Huh? I never cease to be amazed that a boy in high school cannot differentiate between Greek junk and Latin junk. Huh? Oh, gosh, but I wish I could sleep this afternoon. Can't hardly keep my eyes open. You'll feel brisk enough once you get outside in the fresh air and walk to the office. I suppose... I hate to emerge from this sweet language. Well, Willie. <laughs> Shall we jump? <laughs> Let's do. Six more seconds. Two more seconds. Okay. Any little old message you want me to give Alvy Trogel or Charlie Hills when I'm down on West Monroe Street this afternoon? Tell Alvy Trogel I love him. Tell Charlie Hills to expect a large bunch of American beauty roses first thing tomorrow morning. All right. Boy, but I'm sleepy. Mm-hmm. No, sir, by George, that's the truth. Noon hour's my favorite time of the day. I can sit around easy and comfortable with my father and mother and digest my dinner and chat about this, that, and other thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I better crawl out of this lethargy, I guess. Walk in here, hat and overcoat, so I can put you on. Two seconds, we said, Willie. Uh-huh. Dinner dishes are waiting in the sink. Uh-huh. Shall we jump? Which concludes another brief interlude to Small House halfway up the next block. And there we leave Crisco's vacant aid until tomorrow. 
Say, do you think it takes years of practice to make really grand eating cakes? Well, it needn't, because even young brides are now turning out tempting, fluffy cakes they can really be proud of. Yes, with the new Sure Mix Crisco. That new Crisco's made by a special patented process that brings you three exclusive new advantages. Lighter cakes, smoother textured cakes, and cakes that taste better than those you can make with any other home shortening we know of. Why, in a recent independent test, Crisco made in hundreds of homes, women just like you bake cakes with Crisco, and these Crisco cakes were compared to cakes made with every other type of shortening. And when those families made a choice, they voted four to one for cakes made with Crisco over all the other shortenings combined. So try Crisco today. And remember, it wasn't only four to one for lighter cakes, but four to one for flakier pastry, four to one for better tasting fried foods. That was the family vote. Four to one for new Sure Mix Crisco. And don't forget to listen to Crisco's Vic and Said tomorrow. This is Mel Allen speaking. It has to be one of the great travesties in the history to, that all the Vic and Said episodes that are lost are lost. But we got what we got, and uh, I will be satisfied with that for now until we run out. And uh, these ads for Crisco are just so rich and yummy. And, and, and the thrill, can you imagine uh, being a housewife and actually being thrilled to make a cake? I Just the whole housewife concept, which no longer exists in our time, it's so alien, even though... I guess when I grew up, when I was very young, until I was probably four or five, maybe a little older, I had a mother who was a housewife and stayed home and baked bread and cakes and made dinners. And it, it, it this kind of thing just doesn't exist in our culture anymore. Those who can actually afford to stay home they hire somebody, I would well imagine, to do the household chores. It's, I don't know, it's another PQ River is a very old man kind of a thing. Um, to look at just all of the things. I mean, we had story hour, but it was just regular story hour once a week. And my grandmother would take me and the librarian would read stories I loved that. And we had shows like Captain Kangaroo. How many of you remember that? It was just such simple stuff. Yeah, there were stories and puppets. Did puppets even exist anymore? I guess they're on, like, religious programming. But we had all kinds of ventriloquist dummies. We had Winchell Mahoney time with uh, Paul Winchell, a very fine ventriloquist and his puppets, Jerry Mahoney, Knucklehead Smith, and, ah, uh, let's see. Jerry had a girlfriend who looked exactly like him. I think it was uh, this same puppet with a blonde wig named Tessie, and they had a dog maybe named Farfel? Or am I confusing him with somebody else? Uh, there were just so many puppets uh, and, of course, back to Captain Kangaroo, he had Mr. Moose, who loved ping-pong balls, and he had Bunny Rabbit, who had a thing for carrots, of course, and uh, Mr. Moose talked, and Bunny Rabbit, I don't think, did. And there was Mr. Green Jeans, his friend, who would bring little animals onto this show. I mean, I guess public TV and Sesame Street do that in a more streamlined way. But if you can catch old episodes on, like, YouTube, this was just a mellower sort of thing. And Captain Kangaroo, while he wasn't Mr. Rogers, had that same sort of kind-hearted delivery. And... Yeah, that, that once again, I just digress off into La La Land and these strange memories of this kooky old man 
that you will know and continue to know as the appreciator. Appreciating your time and uh, telling you if you've got comments, topics you want me to talk to, ideas for shows, just send them over to kpqr.torc at gmail.com and uh, we'll work on it. We'll work together to bring a better and better show each and every week, each and every time. I mean, I'm doing a few of these a week now and I really enjoy this and I hope you do too. So uh, until the next time we meet, as I always say, every time, set the controls for the heart of the fun.